Hi, Beckman here for Popside, and I am in Venice, and we are here. Look at this with this amazing woman. Woo, Megan Cope, how are you? Good, thanks, Beck. I am so excited to be here, but more excited that you're here, and you just did such a fantastic talk in Richard's Aboriginal Embassy. How do you feel? Yeah, great. It's, it's a beautiful day here, and um, we've had stories from all across the world um, and so it's been a really great day yeah you um, were describing your uh, your investigation into middens and into your um, quantum yucca heritage around oysters the thing that really um, sort of captured my well blew me away was uh, where the site of the opera house is was an enormous midden can you just tell us a bit about that well um, yeah so I've been working um, with the idea of middens um, and trying to, I guess, educate people on what they are um, or what they were, more importantly, actually, um, and um, how they uh, are integral in our Aboriginal architecture. Um, yeah, and I guess you know my country is sort of it's 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 not as um, accessible as Sydney, for example. Like so, the middens on my country, you know, it's much harder for the everyday Australian to maybe imagine what I'm trying to explain. So um, yeah, the Gadigal midden um, at Dubba Gully, which is where now the Sydney Opera House stands, is a really good um, uh, reference point um, because of the cultural site that it is now um, but there is no acknowledgement of what the site was prior um, I mean you know it's not for me to speak about um, Gadigal country in that way but uh, I guess you know the exhibition that I was referring to in my talk was at the Art Gallery of New South Wales and I wanted to pay my respects uh, to that midden that is no longer there um, you know as a saltwater woman um, knowing that our middens have been also erased. Yeah. yeah. And you also referred to the one on Strabroke Island, which I know well at Point Lookout. Yeah. And again, probably the most, as you said, best piece of real estate on the island, which has become a surf life saving club. And I think what really struck me is sort of re like rewording or wording the language better because you said that midden means like rubbish dump or throw away. That must mean a lot to you to find a new way a new word or a new way for us to understand well it's just you know the whole thing is about exposing the um, the language um, that's embedded in the acts of violence that we continue to see on our country you know and um, yeah like it is no accident that a midden, the, the actual meaning of it is rubbish dump and it is no accident that why people refer to our um, cultural sites as rubbish dump, you know, like that's all, that um, exposes um, the colonial understanding of our relationship to our country and um, time and place and family. So, um, yeah, I, you know, for me the work is called Reformation, um, which is just, you know, reforming material but it is like reformation has religious context it's also um you know i think beyonce has an album called reformation or something so that you know it's like a really loaded word um but yeah for me it's just um i'm trying to reform these ideas um and these relationships and the cognitive dissidence that occurs in the penal colony in australia yeah yeah bringing that conversation to this space in this site where that site there is probably the most exclusive venue in the world right now there it, how, how how does that reframe what you were trying to do or, or how's extended or, or bring depth to it well this is um this is the this is you know this is what's so wonderful about richard like um this is how we, we're used to this we're used to having to go to these lengths and um you know ha make guerrilla style artwork and actually force our way in in lots of ways and so um Does that always still be the most like the thing that actually stands out and everyone remembers and is winning it's amazing yeah um and so it should I because mean, it means something like it is something that moves something it reveals the truth it it changes the paradigm and i think innately all humans want that 
but they don't know how to access it or they're seduced by all the other in a way and I think that's what's so great about this it's it's going stop look this is real yeah well it is our turn to be listened to now like all of the systems um, that and all of the things that were used to justify um, our dispossession and our um, you know culture and our way of life is uh, revealing itself to be a catastrophic failure so it is time to listen to first peoples globally like it's just time you know we don't have much time if we keep maintaining this failure you know um and it's similar to what jamala was talking about um there's such a connection to uh food like the seed and you're the oyster but like that's also life and culture and ha family and history and for thousands and thousands of years and we still aren't prepared to take the time to understand in so many ways well, that's because of um, the way, uh, you know, non-Indigenous people, I guess, view the land as, um, you know, a, a stock or a resource. We don't talk about our country like it's a resource. It's not a resource. Oysters, Kenyan Yarra is not a resource. It is um, a, a really in vital um, part of our ecosystem. They clean the water, the Kinyanyara and the Kwampi and the hairy mussel, they do everything, they do so much work. Like, um, you know, the way we see ourselves and our sovereign lands, if you have access to them, and which luckily I do, not every Aboriginal person has that privilege, you know, um, but when you have that, you know, your job is to understand it and then to respect it and to then identify your job in looking after that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's what, what I've heard also from um, Sylvia yesterday that um, feels like First Nations women are so respons taking such responsibility for their own people and their own land. It makes me really emotional because I think they're teaching me, white women, that this is our job and thank you. It is our job. I mean, the fact is, you know, 90%, 90% of our oyster reefs on Kwanawaka country are extinct. You know, if we can just rebuild 50%, think about the health of the waterways and then how that will have a positive impact on everybody. Yeah. It's not about black and white people, this is about doing what is necessary right now, what is yeah. critical right now. Yeah. yeah fantastic. Yeah. Oh, so good. Now just quickly, Richie's been a big um, inspiration and influence on you. He, he loves you, loves your work. Can you give us a little insight into what you think makes him so special? He is the most courageous black man I know. Um, not to mention intelligent, um, fearless. Um, and, you know, Richard shares, like, all of the success that he's achieved. And, you know, he, he's, he's a very, very generous person. And, you know, we just... We're just friends. Like, you know, I met Richard before I was in proper now. We just it's just natural. And none of the none of our community in Brisbane was like, you know, match made or whatever. Like we just naturally found each other and um, through our love of art and our passion for our people and our survival and and our empowerment. So Richard's been really generous um, always to me and, and, and a big inspiration because he just gets shit done. Like he just, yeah. you know, he's fearless. And, and he brings us all along for the ride, That's which right. is so good. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's great. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm very thankful um, for, for him. Yeah. Um, and, and this, I mean, I never, never, ever in my wildest dreams... Did I think I would be invited to come and speak in a t in the tent embassy in Venice? Like, it's extraordinary. It's incredible. It's making black history. It is. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. And you're leading it, baby. You're leading it. Congratulations. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, thanks.